So the topic uh, of my talk today is about uh, identifying the illegal dumping of construction waste using uh, big data. I just uh, secured this project from uh, uh, public policy research to fund it. Uh, and doing that with my uh, collaborator, uh, uh, research assistant professor, uh, Frank Shea, who is also sitting in the audience. But anyway, so uh, before I introduce how to do that, I, I would like to uh, uh, talk a bit more about the uh, lab and actually leading. The lab I'm uh, trying to do is called iLab. It's basically a, an urban big data lab. So, so uh, it is housed in the uh, uh, seventh floor uh, of the Nose building. So next time, if you have time, please come to visit my lab. So uh, basically, it is a, it's a, a dat uh, urban big data collection, storage, uh, analysis, and visualization to support decision making in smart city development. Uh, it collects data from different sources, like a GIS data, like a GPS, or BIM, or remote sensing, or some other uh, data sources. Uh, so we aim to use uh, our lab as the, uh, to support the uh, uh, research in other labs. Uh, in the meantime, actually, the la lab also has its own uh, unique research ring. For example, one of my uh, current research uh, uh, projects is to try to develop an urban digital twin. Um, so actually, major cities around the world, like New York, like London, uh, uh, Singapore or, or Berlin are trying to develop some their city city level uh, digital models. Hong Kong uh, has no exception. Actually, recently Hong Kong released the a new version of uh, 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 digital model. Um, my professor in, in Stanford University, when he uh, uh, read this article, he immediately sent me an email saying, "Oh, this is something very encouraging." Um, Yes, but basically, I'm not very happy with all the uh, works now uh, that major cities are doing because if you look at the uh, uh, city models, basically they are uh, they have very limited information. Um, for example, the buildings are represented as blocks, uh, rows are represented as essential lines. So in our turn, actually, the model has limited semantics. Okay, uh, in addition. The city model is not machine readable. We can easily tell that is a building, that is a bridge. But uh, talking about smart city, you, you, you need to use a uh, machine, use a computer. So make sure the, the model uh, is machine readable. So to try to uh, enrich the semantics uh, using the manual efforts as possible, but this is extremely uh, time consuming. So you annotate this is a window, that has a water tank. And this is also very tedious. Okay, I can imagine this is a, a terrible job. Okay, if you ask you to do to do that manually, so because this is a at a city level, so we have to use AI or use a uh, algorithm to do this. Okay, to develop a semantic, uh, rich, uh, 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 digital model. So. Um, we we start from the digital twin uh, from uh, 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 level one. We we have a term called the level of detail to define this kind of a uh, 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 urban digital twin. So we purchase the uh, data from the lens department. I must say this is good stuff. Okay, very good detail uh, data. But uh, I'm not sure whether this is the data uh, that Professor Lee is seeking for lens department. It's quite pricey. Okay, so if it is a, the data you want to come, we share the data with you. But if it's not, let's organize together to, to, to bargain with the uh, lens department to get the data. Okay, so with the I, IB1000 data, it's possible to develop the level one uh, LOD1 uh, 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 city model. Um, but we, again, I, 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 I want to uh, develop more details. So, for example, we, we develop the rooftop. Uh, rooftop. So uh, I, I, I search around back in Hong Kong, we don't have this kind of data. But only uh, CEDD, I'm not sure whether CEDD has a representative here today. Uh, I, I dropped an email say, oh, is that possible to provide the, the rooftop uh, data? 
actually, they are very generous. They said, no problem, we can give you for research purpose. Uh, so I got the data uh, for free, okay, which is lucky. But the, 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 the thing is, that actually, the data was scanned in 2010 and 2011. A lot of things have changed ever since. So, um, but for some other cities, like Dublin, they now provide a very uh, higher uh, dense density data. Uh, for uh, for free download, actually, I'm not sure whether in Hong Kong uh, next step we can we can ch uh, try to make up this part of data. So uh, using the uh, CEDD data, we can uh, we are able to detail the rooftop. Okay, so for different purposes, for example, some of my colleagues are trying to uh, predict the green roof, okay, of uh, green roof in Hong Kong. So because in Hong Kong, uh, when you try to uh, build a green roof, you don't have to uh, 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 seek the uh, building's permit from the depa uh, uh, department. So it's, it's, it's critical to know where the, all the green roofs are. So uh, another colleague of mine is trying to develop something very interesting. He called that edible roof. Okay? Trying to use the rooftop to develop some urban farming. Okay? We Hong Kong, uh, we, we don't really want uh, small potatoes, tomatoes, but it just provide a, a community, okay, a, com uh, a social community for us or for the aged people, okay, to have a, a, a way to communicate with each other. So also uh, a lot of uh, uh, improper use of the rooftops, for example, is to use the unauthorized building works. So it is critical. To, to have the details of all Hong Kong's rooftops. Okay? Sometimes there's, there's a water tank there, sometimes there's a, uh, a, a satellite dish there. You cannot use that part. So if you really want to use the rooftop, you have to have the details. I'm not sure, perhaps, uh, 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 Professor Lee, again, your index can be verified with say, some uh, like uh, unauthorized uh, building works on the rooftop. If there's a lot of unauthorized work, perhaps they say for slams or for some other purposes, we can work on that. Okay, then, uh, some of my colleagues uh, are also doing something interesting. Use the data like uh, uh, to try to see to 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 improve the workability in Hong Kong. And my other colleagues uh, are trying to use okay, the uh, the data to to try to do the uh, urban planning. Uh, my team is, is also uh, trying to further detail the uh, urban digital twin from level one to three uh, to two to three to four. Okay, so I don't have time to to elaborate all the uh, AI algorithms here, but I can say this uh, is quite uh, interesting, and both projects have been funded by Research Grant Council. Now I'm talking about uh, uh, construction waste management, illegal dumping. So um, in Hong Kong, uh, construction waste, normally we divide construction waste into two types. Okay? One is the inert part, okay? another type is the long inert part. Inert part, okay, like uh, uh, debris, rubble, earth, and the concrete actually can be reused okay, as uh, uh, aggregates or some other things. Uh, long inert part, Okay, so, so, so basically organic must be landfilled. I can provide you a little statistics. Okay, uh, among all the construction waste generated, this long inner part is only around 5%. Okay, that means the rest, 95%, is inert. Okay? We have to landfill the, the uh, long inner part, but that 5% actually consumes one quarter of all the landfill space in Hong Kong. So we must have to, we must okay, deal with this part uh, uh, critically. In Hong Kong, okay, since 2006, actually we, have, we had a, a, a construction waste disposal charging scheme. So if you want to dispose a ton of construction waste in different government facilities, you have to pay for it. Okay? They upgrade the, the price in 2000, uh, 2017. So there is an incentive that for some of the, I don't know, contractors, developers, or, or lorry drivers to dump the construction waste in somewhere rather than the government facilities so they can save money, okay, save chips, 
save time. So that is the illegal dumping. Uh, so my research, so this is an interesting, I'm sure you know this, this is a, is a, is a illegal dumping uh, 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 mountain in new territories somewhere. Okay. This is the case in Shenzhen. So the landslide actually destroyed 33 buildings and, and making uh, more than 70 people disappear. So this part, the illegal dumping part, we must uh, look at that seriously. Okay, the interesting audits commission, audit, auditor uh, published a, a report in 2016. That report is quite interesting. And if you, you read them, you, you will know a lot of interesting things about uh, illegal dumping and the construction waste management behind. Uh, my task is trying to identify the illegal dumping case. It's basically urban, uh, uh, urban crime, okay? urban criminal things. So uh, I use this to, this is Hong Kong, okay? In Hong Kong every day, uh, there are a lot of construction works going on. So uh, lorry drivers, the trucks, they have to dis transport the construction waste and uh, dispose of them in different facilities. So basically, we have uh, three types of facilities. This is called landfill, okay? Basically for uh, 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 long inlet or, uh, construction waste. And then you have a public field reception can accept inlet construction waste for future years, for example. And they, in Hong Kong, normally we, uh, we have very congested construction site and the construction labor cost is higher. So if you don't have time to sort the waste, okay, sort the construct, uh, inlet from the long inlet part, you can send the uh, mixture of the construction waste to these facilities but interesting, so every, for every load of construction waste uh, disposed in a government uh, facilities, actually you have a record left there. Okay, you have a record, like the transaction date, what kind of vehicle transport that. So for privacy, they actually hide one of the numbers, but you can easily recover that. So, okay, so that's the uh, uh, big thing about big data, right? So you have an account number, you have all sorts of data. So actually, each year, you have more than one million record of this kind. So that actually forms the big data of construction waste generation in Hong Kong. All right? So, uh, so like uh, six or seven years ago, I hired a student, uh, RA, to, to, to uh, they, they just call the uh, EPD, and they're interesting. At that time, uh, big data was not popular. So they didn't wear the value. So they gave me the, the data. So I didn't pay for anything, Dr. Uh, Professor Lee. So if you look at this, it says uh, facility information, open data. You have all the open data there. But there's only one critical missing uh, jigsaw piece. That is the data about the, all the construction sites. So actually, who is the client? Okay, what kind of uh, uh, what is the uh, GFA? What is the contract sign? What is the construction period of the, this? So uh, with that, without the uh, uh, piece, I actually cannot form a, a true a whole story. So again, I ask my student uh, to approach them, uh, and that time I was given the data. So I didn't pay anything for that. But now, okay, because I, this database is updating gradually. Now when I approach uh, EPD, nobody replies me. So I hope this, <laughs> uh, you can help me again, EPD can help me to, to uh, uh, identify the data. So uh, I use a lot of data cleansing, do a lot of linkage, and trying to put all the pieces together to try to identify the illegal dumping from this big data. Don't believe this. This is not true, okay? This is just, <laughs> this is true. Okay, so uh, I actually uh, uh, divided the task into three, three steps. The first step is to try and understand the illegal dumping, okay? So trying to understand why there is a behavior and then uh, have a set of uh, uh, indicators. And then the second step is to develop an analytic ba a model based on the identified indicators. And then the third step, is to try to chain and calibrate the model using known offense cases. Okay, this is again critical. So I, I need to 
uh, identify some offense cases and try to identify the characteristics. But I, whatever I tried, I can only find a short video on the, on the, on the internet and I identify the five uh, cases so I can do the pilot test. Now I'm desperately looking for the, some other offense cases. Okay, I, I understand EPD has the data because they installed the surveillance camera in some uh, transport uh, black uh, ports. But they said, Dr. Lu, I cannot give the data. It's privacy data. So I talked to some lawyers. They said, oh, might, might I have some uh, 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 case description in this website? So I searched and searched. I cannot find the data. So actually, some people <laughs> recommend me to sit in the court. Uh, but these are normally very small cases. So they only announce the day ahead. So I cannot really plan my trip. Uh, I also wrote to uh, Zimmerman. He said, "Wilson, probably you don't have to. You have to ambush yourself and try to shoot a cam uh, shoot the offense cases." But I, some other people say the people will beat me. So for my safety, I'm, I'm yet to do that. But I, I just uh, uh, and and desperately uh, looking for some other data source to change my AI model. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>